Well, hey there everyone, welcome back to Stuff We Can Do in Excel. In today's video, we're going to look at the aggregate function. Uh, this is similar to the sum function and the subtotal function, but the aggregate function has more capabilities and actually allows you to do some things that the subtotal and the sum function do not allow you to do. So let's get into it and see how we use the aggregate function. So here's some data that I want us to look at. Now, now the data is meaningless. I don't I just gave some labels over to the left and some sum and some numbers. I don't even know what the numbers mean. I just made them up for purposes of this discussion. So what I'm going to do, we've got got the numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 for sum, subtotal, and aggregate. And we're going to use these functions for each of these sets of numbers. And I want to see, I want you to see how how the the results differ depending upon what's going on with the number. So if I do sum, it's pretty simple. We simply equal sum, parenthesis, and highlight the range. Now, when I do that, it's going to add up all the numbers from cell B3 down to B7, and I get a total of 150. The subtotal will work very similarly. I don't know how I got that J in there. The subtotal and parenthesis. Now, when, it, when I do this with the subtotal and hit parenthesis, notice it gives me a whole lot of options down here. There are actually 11 uh, f different functions or, or, or um, uh, tools that you can use within the subtotal function. You can do average, count, count A, maximum, minimum, product, which is multiplication, standard deviation of samples, standard deviation for population, summation, and variance for sample and for population. Now you notice there's also some other ones down here. There are 101 and 102, 103. They, they're very similar. They parallel what's at the top, but with a one zero in front of it. So let's go see uh, what we'll do once we do this. I'll show you how the, the answers will differ if you use these other options. So we're going to actually use sum. So I'm going to hit hit double click that and it'll put that in there hit a comma and now all I have to do is put in the range so subtotal is pretty easy you tell it which function you want to use you put in the range and it gives you that um, now aggregate is going to work very similar it equals aggregate paren and it's going to give me that option it's going to give me all these options only this aggregate function actually has additional functions it goes it includes median mode large small percentile quartile it's got a lot of extra stuff in it that's that the the subtotal function does not have we're going to still pick summation so i'll pick pick nine for summation and i could just type in the number and hit a comma now when i go to the next argument for my aggregate function it gives me some options down here and i'm going to check track choose the one that says number three ignore hidden rows error values nested subtotal and aggregate functions so so uh, it allows you to do some things and we'll, we'll play around with this for a little bit let's go see what we do if i click this then i double click it puts a three and I'm going to hit a comment. Now I hit my range. So each one of these is the, the actual um, uh, argument structure is going to be a little different for each one of these. And as I go from sum to subtotal to aggregate, the arguments get a little bit more complicated. And, and, and I get 150. So why in the world would I want sum, subtotal, and aggregate if they all give me the same answer? Well, they actually don't all give me the same answer. It depends upon what I'm trying to do. So for instance, what if there is an error in here? So let's say instead of 10, if somehow we got 10 divided by 0. Okay, And we put that in there and showing up that div the summation formula will not know what to do if there's a, an error. It'll give you an error in the total, and you got to go find that error to fix it. What if I did that for subtotal? Well, I do it for subtotal, and it still does the same thing. But for aggregate, look at this. It, it ignores it and just adds up the remaining numbers. Okay? So, so this would be great if I, if I knew I was supposed to get to 150 and I didn't get there, I'd know to go look for the error. So that's one thing. So, so sum and subtotal are the same here, but aggregate is different. Okay, what happens if we hide a row? So let's assume, let's take row four, and we're going to right-click on it and hide it. Go down the scale, hide is one of my options. Now watch what happens to my totals. Sum and subtotals still give me 150, still add in that extra amount, but the aggregate ignores it. It pretends it's not there, and, and so I only get 130, right? Well, what if I change that formula? Instead of using a three up here, uh, notice up here in my... Um, uh, in my format, I've got a three, right? What if I didn't do three? What if I did a four? Now four is is don't I don't ignore anything. I keep everything. If I did a, if I put a four there, effectively it's still the same function as the subtotal function. But when I go in and I change that to a three, which remember was 
ignore everything, right? And I change that to a three, suddenly it ignores that missing 20. So that's, that's, so that's one of the ways that aggregate will differ from the others. And let me show you something else. So let's now go see what happens uh, with some of these things if we uh, change this. Remember that? We, we did that as a 9. What if we did a 109 in the subtotal? What happens? Notice when I do a 109, it's going to ignore those hidden amounts. Um, that's what the 109 does for us. It ignores stuff. And so I can tell it what to count and what not to count. And so what I end up with is that. Now, so the command I use will determine what gets ignored and what doesn't get ignored, right? So why is the, where is this going to be useful? Well, in the next uh, part, we're going to go to another uh, uh, tab here. And we're going to look and see what happens when uh, we want to filter uh, our data and how that impacts the subtotal versus the aggregate function. So let's take this data set that we have. Now this data set, it tells me the, it's about sales and it tells me the date, the month, the name of the customer, customer ID, the item they purchased, uh, what type of of revenue is it? Is it a merchandise? There's different options here. Merchandise, facility rental, lessons, merchandise, and other. So, and, and equipment rental. So there's five different types of revenue we could have. Uh, and then you get the sale, the tax, and the net sales. So, and this database actually is pretty long. If we go down, it goes all the way down 2,370 some odd lines. So there's a lot of data uh, in this particular data set. Now, if we go and look at our formulas, I want to total net sales, and I'm going to do it using both the aggregate function and the subtotal function. So our aggregate function is equals aggregate, open paren, and I'm going to choose summation. I'm going to choose my option number three, which remember is in ignore hidden rows, error values, nested subtotals, and aggregate function. So I'll double click on that, hit comma, and now I'll do my range, which if, if I was using um, uh, uh, named ranges, we could use that, but I'm just going to highlight the first one, control shift down, that highlights the whole range, I'll hit enter, and it gives me a total. And the total is $3,087,396.07. Now I can use the subtotal function to get the same answers, equals subtotal, open parenthesis. Remember, the only option, we'll choose number nine. Um, and then what we'll also do, comma, and then we'll do the range. Click on cell I6, control shift down, enter, and we got the same total. Now, that's fine and dandy, except what do I want to do if I'm going to do uh, filtering? Now, what's interesting is this will treat filtering the same under each of these. Now, remember, if I, let's say, let's hide row 7. Um, or, or let's, let's, say, let's say I just wanted January. So what I might do is go down and find, start where February is over here in the far left, and there it is in cell, uh, first one is cell 207, so I'm going to click on that and hit control down. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to hide all that. What you'll notice up here at the top is that I get a different answer. I get, for aggregate, I get 210,000 in, in net sales. Using the subtotal function, I get 3,087,000. ,000. So why do I get everything with the subtotal and not with aggregate? Because remember, Aggregate is, is ignoring the hidden rows, okay? So I hid the rows that I didn't want aggregate to, to count, and so it's not counting those. It's only counting the rows you can see. Net sales is counting every row, whether you can see it or not. So let's unhide those. Just hit the undo and it'll hide. So the next thing I'm going to do is what if I decide to filter this? Now, filtering is different. The, the, both these functions both handle filtering the same way. So let's say I just wanted to look at the merchandise sales. So I might turn off all of these options, click merchandise sales, and boom. Now it gives me the total for those. What if I just wanted to do, uh, let's say I want to do lesson revenue. Click on lesson revenue. Hit OK, and it's going to tell me my total lesson revenue. So that's really nice. I can do that. Or I can go back and just do all of it at once, um, and I get back to my 3087000 Alternatively, if I just wanted to look at January now, I just go and filter, using because my numbers are in a table. I filter the month of January by clicking on this. I just, I'm just i going to turn all of them off and click just on January, and it'll give me just January. Or I could choose, if I want to, I could say what was my revenue just for February. I could do that as well. And it's going to give me that. So, so filtering works either way with aggregate or subtotal. But remember, aggregate, you can set it up to ignore the, the hidden information. 
the net sales does not ignore it. It still adds it in. So if you're trying to do the thing I did before, do this where I, you know, where I hid some data, then it's not going to net or subtotal is not going to be the function you want to use. You want to use aggregate. Let me show you another case where we might want to use the aggregate function, and it becomes uh, very helpful. So let's look at this balance sheet. So in this balance sheet we have from Mayberry Inc., uh, we've got some data. We've got some cash data. We got the to the subtotal for current assets is 122,856. We've got some land and some fixed equipment less than accumulated depreciation, subtotal which is 42,089 and the total is 185,895. So let's see how we got those totals. So the 122,856 is if you look is a subtotal function. Oops, that's not what I want. It is a subtotal function and there it is and it totals those up okay now the uh this the, if i go down to the to the 42089 that's that's just a sum function okay so what's happened is i've used down in the bottom for total assets i've used subtotal and subtotal is adding up and it's ignoring this subtotal adding up these numbers it ignores the thing that's called that was used computer using subtotal as this number and this number which was summation and 87750 okay now if i had done this as a subtotal watch what happens equals subtotal and highlighted these items right here i'm going to get the same total in that cell Okay. Let's see, if, but see, it doesn't give me the 185 anymore. It's it's ignoring this because it's a subtotal. It's ignoring that because it's a subtotal, and that's not really what we wanted to do, right? So that would not be a good function to use. Now, what if I had used instead of subtotal down here? I'd used aggregate. So if I go down here and instead of subtotal, I use the aggregate function. and I put in this whole range here. Remember, 122 is a subtotal, 42089 is a subtotal, and I take 750, what happens? It still gives it to me because it's ignoring, just like subtotal, aggregate will ignore these two numbers. So what I probably would want to do is, is as I'd want to include this as a sum and this as a sum. Actually, I probably use that as a subtotal, and this is simply a sum of the numbers. Because when I do that, it's going to allow me to total that, and it's going to give me the right number down here. And I can do a similar thing if I do um, for my liabilities. I've got my liabilities added up for the, that is a um, subtotal, as you can see. Um, that is a subtotal function uh, right here. You see that? And the 105037, which is total equity, is also a subtotal function. Actually, let me get the cursor down there. We see that's also a subtotal. And when I do down here my total function aggregate, it's going to ignore it. This 105, and it's going to ignore that 8858. It's going to add up just the actual numbers and ignore the things that I identified as subtotals. Um, if I had used a sum function in one of these, instead of if I had done the sub fu sum function up here for my total equity, I would have had a problem. As you can see, that would now change because I'm counting that 105 twice. That's why we want to use subtotals instead of sum functions when we're doing these kinds of computations. They will allow uh, the aggregate function to then ignore those. Now I can use the aggregate function here also. In many ways, the aggregate function and the subtotal function are interchangeable. It's just remember the aggregate function has got some tools in it that the subtotal function does not have available to it. We'll go here and put change that back to a subtotal. And sure enough, it gives us the right answer now. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, you now have a better understanding of the aggregate function versus the subtotal and the summation function. Uh, so we'd love to have you subscribe to the channel uh, to, to continue to get information as we post it about uh, uh, Excel and, and the things you can do with other Microsoft products. Uh, so we'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see you next time soon here on Stuff We Can Do in Excel.